So when you're presented with a deal like this, it really is one of those oh shit moments. Now, back in 2016, when I was offered these 10 houses, one of the biggest hurdles for me was how do I fund the deal? At the time, our business model was to work with joint venture partners on a profit share, and that's exactly what we did. Now, it didn't quite work out like that. We ended up having to fund part of the project ourselves for various different reasons. But what we're left with is 10 properties that are valued so much higher than what we paid for them that it's created over a million pounds worth of equity. We had issues when we were buying this because it was from a housing association. So we had to meet all of their legislation and all of their legal criteria. They had to evict some people, they had to pay people off who were on protected tenancies. And in the end, we had to buy a property with a protected tenant in it that we couldn't do any of the refurbished work inside and we couldn't do the windows and doors. So therefore we couldn't render it. That's why we've got this ugly duct in, in the middle. And even though it generates over 200,000 pound a year in gross rental income and well in excess of 80,000 pound a year in net profit, you still have your ongoing issues, right through from tenants, to the property itself, to planning issues, and to the joint venture partners as well. So even the most profitable deals, even the best buy, refurbish, refinance deals, and the biggest gross income deals can still never satisfy some people. But the big cherry on top for this project was the plot at the back. When you've got 10 properties next to each other, collectively those gardens make a building plot. So this is the rear part of every single property. You can see we're fenced off, so they've got smaller gardens and that creates a plot. And to the untrained eye, you'd think the principle of residential development would be quite easy. We're in an area which isn't a conservation area. We're not in the curtilage of any listed buildings. Next to it are three and a half, four storey flats. So why wouldn't we be able to get planning permission? But all of the pre-app advice that we've done and all of the architect and professional advice that we've been given is that it's just gonna be an uphill struggle. I'm one for taking a risk when there is a reward at the end of it, but that's an educated risk, not just hope value. But what you can do is you can use the planning system to your advantage. Now, under permitted development rights, we can do a single story extension out the rear of every single property without hesitation. That will enable us to put two extra bedrooms on each property. That's 20 extra rooms, an average of £115 per week. That's a massive amount of extra income we could be earning on this site if we just listen to policy and the facts that are presented in front of us instead of a hope value of building something in the plot at a later date.